You just go down to the local pond, grab one of the ducks. Yes. That are in those cages. Bring them up here and toss them on the fire. They're gonna struggle a lot. They're gonna struggle quite a bit. But you know what? You don't give up. You don't give up at all. They toss them on the fire. They try to escape to kick, kick them back in. Frogs oh, can eat like... anything if they're small enough. But would you eat a live duck if it was it was small, as Kermit the Frog? Look, I'll tell you something, Shade. Here, here, here's the here's something that the uh, networks won't ever tell you about me, Kermit. Is that there's a lot of stress dating Miss Piggy. She's very, very stressful. So. I have pent up rage, so when I go out and I say, hey look bitch, I need my space. I go out and I just start choking chicken. I choke my chicken a lot. You understand that? I choke my chicken a lot. <laughs> I take that chicken. And <laughs> I can imagine. I, fire. I, I, I choke a lot of chicken. That's what I do. And then uh, I come back to the station and get that big old hand. Shoved up my butt and I keep on going with a smile on my face. Yay! <laughs> Wait, so uh, how would Gonzo feel? Cause he's with Camilla, the chicken. How would he feel if he found out that you're not, you're kind of uh, a chicken torturer? Well, Gonzo doesn't understand that uh, Camilla likes to be choked. That's her key. Oh. I on, a, on a fling, I didn't. Make sure you don't tell Miss Piggy about that, because uh, she'll come after me. You know what I'm saying? She'll come after me hardcore with that one. And then, oh, there's going to be drama on the set, and everything's going to be a problem. Gonzo knows it's going to fall off, or he's going to swallow it or something. That thing, he, he's almost eating his whole nose. You know, he's almost eating that thing. Is that really a nose, even? I sometimes wonder. Yeah, there was one time I snuck back. You know, smoking a little bit of that green, it isn't easy being green, I'm telling you what. But, I heard something in one of the dressing rooms, so I went ahead, I peeked open that door, I just kind of, and there I saw Gonzo, holding his nose in his hand. Oh no! I knew it! And it wasn't Camilla the chicken that he was using it on, it was somebody else. Whoa. He's weird, but so he takes the cake. Oh, it might. Yeah. It might. You know, cause, uh, oh, what was one of the movies? Uh, maybe it was uh, Muppets in Space. His nose gets twisted upside down. On that one, it gets twisted. Oh, remember the time Miss Piggy tried to change it to Pigs in Space? And then she's, like, pushing you to do it? That happened on a Family Guy skit, actually. Like, pig. Oh no, it's pigs in space now. Why? There's been a change. There's been a change. So yeah, you got stressed out over that, really. If you don't remember, you can find it on that YouTube. Was very, very... Pigs in space. Family that was Guy. Very unscripted. She did a lot of unscripted shit, which is what uh, uh, really, really pissed me off about her. That's why I really don't care if I cheat on her now. She just pisses me off way too much. <laughs> she joked how she had a frog in her throat, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so the... To make it seem like her and I had such a great relationship, but it didn't. She's only ever sucked my cock a handful of times in all the years. She just wants me for my money. She wants, she wants to be... Money. That's because she wants to be famous, like world famous. That's her goal. That's her real goal. <laughs> you know, in the movies and in the shows and all that, when it shows that <clears throat> all these guys want to be with Miss Piggy and she only has her eyes for me, that's a bunch of bullshit. I've caught her cheating on me before with one of those guys in the back. Yeah. Oh. I got her. It's not as uh, glamorous as you think it is. I forgot. He's fucking a stagehand anyway. Oh man, <laughs> I forgot the name of the rat character, but I, she was with him once, probably too. Oh yeah, what was his name? Razzolo or something. 
I, I want to see Roscoe or Roz. Rosa, 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 Riza, uh. Something the rat. Yeah, he's a fucking rat, alright. But this is an interesting question. Him across the stage. What characters stand a chance of being together with Miss Piggy? Is Fozzie the bear? Would she like Fozzie the bear? Probably not. Would she like Gonzo? Probably not. Would she like uh, Ralph? Maybe. Would she like Scooter? I'd give him more of a chance than Fozzie the bear or Gonzo. I wonder who else. Animal. It's possible that animal. Yes, I was gonna say animal might actually. Uh, he had. He would have no idea what to do. Animal's kind of like the uh, special needs character. You know, he just kind of runs around, high off whatever drugs he's always on, and then it comes down where it's just like when he comes off of those drugs, that's when you see the real animal. He's not even an animal. This dude, always looking for his next high. Always trying to bum money off of people. He's going into them back alleys just to get his next hit. I'm telling you that. So, uh... So an animal's not an animal. I wonder what kind of creature is supposed to be, like, species-wise. But that's like asking the same thing about Gonzo, too. What the hell is he? I don't know. Well, you know how animal's part of that band? Where, uh... You got those homeless-looking people? Oh, yeah... Yeah, those homeless-looking people are really homeless. We uh, we give them a gig here and uh, here and there uh, every now and then, just to give them some money so they don't have to be on the streets. But you know what? They're taking that money right back on the streets, and they're buying drugs with that money. And they come back on the show, and they're like, "Hey, I need another stipend." It's like you know what? You're getting one of these. A stipend. That's a funny word. But yeah, that totally makes sense. And it's a shame that the money gets put to waste. So, you know, there's got to be a different solution. They are of the homeless species. No offense to homeless. Anybody can become homeless. But it's like the, they have types of monsters. Like a pig is a pig. A frog is a frog. Types of Muppet monsters or whatever creatures. And then you have the homeless human. I don't know. Just the homeless species. That would actually be kind of messed up if they actually... On the show, they actually said said that, but they wouldn't. But hey, that you never know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you who's not homeless, that. though. Well, the other Muppets, but especially probably Miss Piggy. She has. She needs her status. You know, I'm pretty sure she has a, a couple of sugar daddies around there as well because sometimes I'm just like, hey, where'd you get that necklace? And she's always like, don't you worry about where I got that necklace. You just worry about the money that you're you're getting in from the Muppets. And I'm like, you know what, bitch? I know something's going on. I'm pretty sure she has a sugar daddy. Or a few of them. She's got some lavish uh, um, things that she wears. And I know I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it at all. Well, if that's the case, then, uh... That, then Miss Piggy... I forgot what I was going to say. There's something about her acting on her own accord, which which by itself is nothing wrong with that, but, you know, she's supposed to be married to you, the Kermit the Frog. <laughs> the Kermit the Frog. Yeah. yeah, the Kermit the Frog. Oh, have you ever actually met Yoda? Or no? I think there might have been a th thing once where you guys met. Well, I know where you all came from, the uh, Henson, Henson workshop. You know, Frank Oz, fantastic man. Gotta tell you, he did, he's, he's done wonderful work. You know, there's, uh, there's a couple times where Yoda and I had a... Uh, had a little bit of a sit down just to, uh, he knows a lot about what's going on in that Star Wars universe. Well, I know a lot what's going on over here at the uh, Muppet area, and, uh, we kind of, uh, exchanged horror stories, if you know what I mean. So, he's, uh, he's a pretty good guy. He doesn't sound like he does in the movie. 
in real life. That's that's the act. That's the act. Oh, really? You know, the uh, reverse problem. <laughs> <laughs> speaking. Right, yeah. Oh, okay, so his the voice is similar? Area. But it's just the way he speaks like, is different, know, yeah. Truth you must find. Yeah, you know what, the truth... Never made sense to me, but he just said, Hey, you know what, George Lucas told me that I have to speak this way because it just sounds more better uh, in this form. And I thought, like, alright, well, if you're getting paid, do it. You know, but George Lucas was a weird guy. It's too much. That's what he says about certain things. Jar Jar is the key to all of this. <laughs> I could quote a lot of George Lucas things if I wanted. Oh, my God, Jar Jar, huh? Yeah, that wasted space. I feel bad for the actor, though. I'm at best because he didn't deserve all this sla the, the flack he got for being the character. But at the same time, Jar Jar could have been better handled. They created a character that was meant to be comic relief, but they really did not do that well enough. He stepped in poo. That's his comic relief. I bet half the Star Wars characters have stepped in poo at some point in their life, but it's Jar Jar they highlight. <laughs> it was uh, uh, <clears throat> partially the fact that, you know, Jar Jar, with the way that he spoke, um... Like he didn't really know what he was doing. That very first scene where he runs, jumps on Qui-Gon Jinn. I mean, technically he didn't need to jump on Qui-Gon Jinn. Nobody needed to do anything but then duck. And those things would have just gone over them anyway. But he just had to panic. Yeah. It, it was... kind of where his uh, first mistake was. It was an opportunity. I must jump... Instead of just quickly getting it my task done, my task hiding in that case, I must show off how funny I am in the process. That's Jar Jar Binks. I must be a purposeful klutz while fighting the droid army. That kind of thing. Uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting was uh, episode one, most of it was just him happening to uh, do something stupid but it ended up working out later on as if nobody else was going to figure out how to do that. But then when episode 2 comes around, it's like, uh, what, 10 years later? I think? Doesn't it, Jar Jar it is, yes. Yeah, 10 year gap between episodes 1 and Jar 2. Jar 3 years, I think, between 2 right. and 3. Yeah, 10 years later, suddenly Jar Jar Binks is perfectly fine. He's part of the Senate. He's uh, not screwing up all over the place. It's like, why couldn't you have done that in episode one? Like, you got banished for or whatever the hell you got banished for. And then suddenly, he, he's perfectly fine as if by some miracle that Jar Jar Binks was like this nice character again. But I find that pretty suspicious. So, uh, what else? Uh, so is taking a big dump or something? Yeah, she said her thing crashed, but she hasn't attempted to get back on. Okay, oh, she texted me again. I think I will call it a night just to be sure to not include the RV part of the post. Okay, yeah, so she's done for tonight. Yeah, she's done. Yeah, she texted me back. So yeah, what do you want to do? Do you want to continue this discussion, or do you want to wrap it up yourself? Because I did start recording again just to get that second part with the whole Star Wars Yoda bit. Frog, camera the frog stuff. If you want me to post that, I can. If not, it's up to you. The choice is up to you. Oh shit, I wasn't pressing my record. I wasn't pressing my speak button, I was pressing the wrong button. Anyways, I was saying that she was offline. I, I recorded this second part, I started again. 
I'm gonna, if you want, I could post the whole conversation we had about Kermit the Frog, Yoda, Star Wars, or I could not post it. It's up to you. Well, the uh, official Kermit the Frog interview. Yes. The behind the Muppet, the Muppet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, actually, yeah, that can. It can in that case, yeah. Kermit the Frog here. Uh, how about this uh, uh, be called um, the Campfire Interview? All tell, uh, tell all by Kermit the Frog. The Campfire Tell All. <laughs> Something. Speaking of telling all, what is the uh, single worst, single most embarrassing moment of you, Kermit the Frog's life? Right. So sometimes outside of the show, we like to, you know, live our regular lives, do our own things, you know. Yeah, buddy buddy what about on the it? Show, right. Right. So now, I'm off the show, I'm trying to do my own thing, sometimes it's like going on the restaurants, sometimes it's like going to, uh, you know, little cafes. The embarrassing stuff happens when one of the other Muppets decides to come in drunk somewhere when I'm there. I'm just trying to enjoy my coffee, maybe, the, uh, maybe a donut or something. And oh man. In, I can and picture an animal. Somebody, and it's like, oh god. Um. The one who gets drunk the most, uh, that, that one, uh, uh, not Beaker, uh, the other one, the short, bald one. Bunsen? I always forget his name. Bunsen, yeah, there you go. Um, Agreed, Peter. I like how we have Bunsen Tux. I'm not sure if I kind of got his voice down, go. Pat, but maybe. You can tell I'm trying to do him, right? Here certainly has a very, very familiar ring to it, that's for sure. I can I can definitely imagine myself talking with him. But yeah, he's, you know, those uh, chemicals he's mixing, you know, it's not necessarily a uh, science project. It's, uh, oh, 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 possibly even worse things. Well, he probably built a meth lab at some point, jeez. <laughs> a, whenever you see a green one on the show, that's absinthe. That's absinthe. Yeah. He's a drunkard. Heavy alcohol, that's for sure. He doesn't even have eyes, though. He just has glasses rims. I'm pretty sure that's all he has. So how does he even... I don't know. Alcoholism. Alcoholism ruined his eyes. So they took him on and said, he said, well, I gotta have some sort of facial... Something and they're like, well, here we'll just put glasses on you. So they put glasses on him, and nobody, uh, nobody thought of it. I was like, all right. But yeah, that's kind of funny. I'm imagining him right now, looking three quarters of the way of three quarters profile picture. Oh look, Beaker, there's some grass we could experiment on. How would you like to experiment on some grass with me? Oh, uh, yeah, some of those uh, actual beakers that they use, I guarantee have been uh, made into a bong every now and then. There's probably one that's on set all the time in the background. That that would explain a lot. Them on screen. Yeah. Next time you see them on screen, when they have all their sciencey stuff on there, take a look at the background. You'll see it. You'll see it back there. Yep, for sure. They should get Bunsen, Beaker, Animal, Gonzo in a room together and have them just go wild. Mm-hmm. And Kermit the Frog, you would be, in that case, that would get under your skin because you like to manage things. And, yeah, you wouldn't be able to manage them. This is why in a lot of cases, if something were to happen, I tell people, do not tell me, because if I have to go to court, I can easily tell them I had no knowledge of it. I have no idea what was going on. Everything was hidden underneath that way. I don't get 
implicated in any issues or any suing for any lawsuits. I can say I had no knowledge of it whatsoever. Sometimes the safest way is the best way. Sometimes if you right know too then. much, then it just costs you. So, uh... Yep, for sure. I was gonna say, do you, do you remember your parent, like your actual Kermit mom and your Kermit dad? Or do they leave the eggs before they hatched? Well, a lot of, uh, a lot of my brothers and sisters, I think we're kind of huddled together in one mass. Mom and dad were there. I think I saw their face. Oh, okay, cool. And they were gone. Yeah, at least you caught a glimpse. I don't know. Because you, you have any idea how many me. other tadpoles there were that they must have laid, and only a handful of them survived into adulthood? You were alone the lucky ones. Oh, yeah, there's uh, me. Um, no, there was another one, because I have nephews. Uh, one of my other uh, cousins. Yes. Or uh, brothers and sisters had, uh, had, had some other tadpoles of their own. In case you haven't heard me talk, you we're seeing on one of the fire. movies as well. Sorry about that. Go on. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Why, what did you do? Oh, I just talked to somebody else in the in the room for a moment. I got distracted. Sorry about that. So what was that last? Yeah, not in here in my house. House. Yeah. So what were you saying? What was the last part you said again? That I have uh, one of my other brothers or sisters. They have kids because I have nephews. They, uh, my nephews are in uh, one of the movies, but they're in there. There's a bird. <laughs> so there's more family. There's more family. That's cool. There's probably a lot of family you don't know because imagine how many eggs are laid with all the tadpoles that come out. You have a lot of long lost brothers and sisters, I'm sure. That's for sure. Some got eaten by gonzo type creatures, I, I'm, I'd wager, but other ones grew up into adulthood and live across the country. I'm pretty sure there was one that actually tried to get on Sesame Street as well. Oh, really? I think I, I think might. But who would that be? Hmm. I'd have to ask some family members. I'm pretty sure there was a, one of them that tried. I'd have to catch up, catch up on some numbers. <clears throat> but no one will be... No one will be as successful as me, that's for sure. I agree with that. Kermit the Frog has a certain following. And I have a hunch it has to do with the collar you wear. The pointy, multi-starred collar. Oh yeah, I wasn't born with this, that's for sure. This is kind of like a... Uh... It's a props outfit piece, yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh... I could take it off, but... But did you know a lot of people think that's actually it's part of you? I, ho I thought it was part of you when I was growing up. But then I realized, oh, crap, that's actually just something you're wearing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly not part of my... But that'd be kind of weird, though. It would be kind of weird. Because what would it be? Just extra frog skin? Perhaps, yeah. It's just extra skin that grew out of the necks, and yeah, that's what it looks. That's what it looks like, honestly. But that's not what it is at all. It's a lot more benign. But I also have UFO pupils. They're shapes of UFOs. I'm deformed. Ah, but only if you look at the UFO from straight on. If you look at it from underneath or on top, then the pupil will look different entirely. Yeah, that's for sure. 
What else? What else is good? Oh, yeah, so, um, you started off in a swamp. What got you to move out of there? Actually, there's, we made a whole movie uh, for that reason. Um, what was it called? Uh, Muppets uh, in New York? Muppets go to Manhattan. Yes, something like that, yeah. Well, yeah, New York. Either, either way, we were on our way out, and that's the first ever crossover between the Muppets and Sesame Street, because we met Big Bird on the way. We said, hey, would you like to come with us? And he's like, no, I'm going over to a place called Sesame Street. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's when you had the brainstorm to be both with the Muppets and the uh, Sesame Street gang. Yeah. Yep. So what is your opinion of Big Bird anyway? Would he would you have him watch over your nest? I, I sometimes, sometimes wonder what... It's kind of, con it's uh, kind of confusing, because, um... You know how in the show, Sesame Street, he has a nest? But yet he's supposed to be a guy? Yeah. Why does he have a nest? Because the whole thing is, people just think of birds first as sitting on nests, without really considering that has to be a guy bird. Oh, bir that's what birds do, they sit on nests. That's the thinking, so Sesame Street just takes, just goes, just runs with it. Meanwhile, it, Big Bird's Nest is just essentially a fancy seat. That's all it is, I'm guessing. I don't, unless there's eggs in it. Well, even if there are eggs, it functions as a really fancy seat for him. If there ever are eggs in there, somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. Well, you know what they say, poached eggs are best eaten raw. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> but what uh, you were gonna hate me for saying this, but frog eggs are actually rather tasty. Okay, okay, okay. I'll be quiet about that. You eat frog eggs? Maybe, maybe not. But hey, it's no worse than eating eggs of other species, like ducks or chickens or roosters or kettle dragons, if they even lamb. Well, I don't know about any of those. Oh, right. I'm going to wrap it up with one. Oh, yeah, them too. I'm going to wrap it up with one more question. If you weren't with Miss Piggy, Very cute. if you weren't with Miss Piggy, who would you want, what other Muppet, or maybe not even a Muppet, would you want to be with? If you consider that worth pursuing and not or just wasteful. Because, you know, Miss Piggy is bad right, enough, it could be worse. Right, Miss Piggy is kind of the uh, person that you're just like, hey, you know what? <clears throat> She's very, very high maintenance. But you know who isn't high maintenance? Now, that group of uh, the, the band that uh, animals part of. There's a there's a chick that's part of that group. She's got the blonde hair. It looks like all she has is eyelashes for eyes. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I you forgot know? the name, but I know the exact person. Yeah. yeah. I hear she's very, very flexible. Oh. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Mm. Miss Piggy is kind of flexible, but you know, when you're going down on her, you kind of get smothered by that extra uh, belly of fat. You know, you don't want to be mean and uh, hurt the girl's feelings, so you just keep eating at it. But I guarantee you, that chicken, that band, mm, that's probably good eating. Uh, speaking of eating, I know I said it was the last question, but I do have another one. Was there a time where a creature actually I don't almost know what her name, but a creature almost ate you? Yeah, I forgot. I can look it up online, but I forgot the name, her name for now. Uh, was there a time a creature almost ate you, like a predator? Um, <clears throat> there's that Muppet that's an eagle. 
Um, the old one. He can't, can't always be trusted. On set, it seems like he's alright. But uh, off set, I can feel him looking at me. And one day, he went swooping down. I dodged him. He said, oh. oh, sorry, I thought you were somebody else. I was like, oh, you son of a bitch. No, you didn't. You know who exactly I am. Is that the... You know who I am. Light blue eagle? Yeah. Yeah, the light blue eagle. I don't know what... I can't remember what his name is either. Weird, I work with all these all these other Muppets. I don't even know what their names are. It happens. Believe me, it happens. You know. But yeah, when in doubt, blame the eagle. That didn't rhyme, so it's one of those things. It is one of those things, but you know what? It is what it is, and there's not a whole lot you can do. Should we end this with advice from Kermit for all the little ones? Yes. Like, what would it be? Number one advice I can give, don't put salt in your eye. Oh, that's actually really good advice. Because salt in the eye, you would think, it's like, oh, I want to just get things cleaned out. No, it just causes a lot of pain. A lot of, what the heck, and a lot of ouch. You have never put salt in your eye. Could it dry out the eyes or whatever? Or could it like m require you to have to get new eyes? <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I never do it. I can only imagine the horrors if you do. Alrighty, I think that's a perfect wrap for the interview. We have a lot of interesting things. It's been a pleasure calling you. It's been a pleasure, Kermit. I guess you're one of the same, so either or. Yes. All right, I'm ending the recording here. And have a good night. Take care. Thanks. <laughs>